Hey guys, welcome back to California Cooking. Here's what's coming up on today's show. Okay, here's a question for you. Pinot, Chardonnay, or bubbly? I'm getting some great wine recommendations from the guys who wrote the book, How to Drink Wine. Then I'm making chicken sliders with a tangy, sweet, and spicy homemade barbecue sauce. And he's building a dessert empire that just makes you smile. I'm talking to the founder of Happy Ice. Chris Stang and Grant Reynolds, they have a new book and it's all about wine. It's a crash course on one of my favorite beverages. I learned so much from these guys and they told me why I should never drink Pinot Grigio again. Take a look. Hi guys, how you doing? Great, how are you? Good, I've just been doing a little light reading of how to drink my wine, your book. How did you guys meet? Tell me tell me the story of how you guys met and how you wrote a book together. Sure, I can kick that off. Um, I, a long time ago, reviewed Grant's restaurant right after it had opened, a restaurant called Charlie Bird in the West Village of New York City. Basically just got to know Grant as the uh, very friendly guy who used to come to my table and pour extra wine as we were um, dining there. I just kept going back to the restaurant even after we had reviewed it and it turned out that some of his business partners knew some friends of mine and then we just became friends and uh, bonded over uh, a shared passion for wine. But I found out very quickly that Grant is, he's probably the best person in the world to make wine relatable. Okay, Grant, so you were, a, or still are, a sommelier, right? People like myself that I, I enjoy wine, but I don't know anything about it. So how did you make it relatable for people? I think what we try to do is just have people focus on the information that's actually useful rather than suggesting to everyone that they become wine experts. Can there be quote unquote cheap wines and what is a cheap wine that are really, really good? And how do we know? Cheap wine is dangerous. Is it? Why? Because sometimes wine is one of those things that like, I don't know, like I, I love, I drink a lot of cheap beer, right? Okay. And, and, but when I'm doing it, I'm just having a beer. I'm not trying to like, think about it, yeah. right? I'm not trying to like be captivated by the way the beer tastes or... You're just having a beer, right. I'm just having a beer. Wine can can do that, right? And it does. But the second that you start to like want to think a little bit about maybe where the wine is from um, or if the wine has like flavors that are a little bit more complex than the cheap wine. And I mean like ten dollars or less okay. on, a, on a retail shelf yeah. it's really it's really hard for that wine to be much more than just like simple and fruity right okay. and that's just because of the cost of making it so if we're going to the grocery store is there a good price point you know if, if it's not a special occasion it's just you want to have a glass of, or a bottle of wine with dinner yeah i would say like the 15 to 25 dollar price point is perfect okay tell me why you feel so strongly about pinot grigio Pinot Grigio is exactly part of that discussion, right? And it's the Italian white wine that everybody knows. It's made, it's like made in a lab, a lot of this stuff. It's not good. Okay. That being said, there's a couple of producers who like take it seriously and are, you know, looking to make really good Pinot Grigio, right? And those do exist. But by and large, what we're saying is that like, hey, the Pinot, run of the mill, we won't like throw any of the big brand names out there. But that stuff just like, Get it out of your life if you're trying to learn a little bit about wine. Break up with it right now. Break up with it. <laughs> you guys have suggested some wines. Let's get to the, I think we were gonna start with the whites, right? So I've got these two. Where do you wanna start? So she's got Chablis yeah. right there, Chablis. right? And then you have um, some white burgundy okay. too. Which one should I open first? Go for the Chablis first. Okay, Chablis first. I really like this. I like it because it doesn't, I don't know if this is the right, it doesn't linger too long. It's crisp and nice and then it goes away. That's what we talk about um, in the book. We talk about the like body of the wine, yeah. which, which a lot of people hear and, and you usually associate it with red wines more, but white wine has the same thing. And that's just how it feels, right? And it's like, is it either kind of tart like a lemon or does it taste like, um, melted butter type thing. And that's the two extremes of white wine. Okay, you guys, was this the one we were gonna try next? Exactly. Okay, now you said this is a 
Bur did you say burgundy? Burgundy. But you, so you think of burgundy as being red, right? Yeah, so there's red burgundy okay. and there's white burgundy. White burgundy is always, this is the homeland of Chardonnay and red burgundy is the homeland of Pinot Noir. Ooh. You like that? I really like that. I, and I, when I saw this, I said, I don't even know what this is. It doesn't have a name on here that I'm, you know, it doesn't say Chardonnay. It doesn't say your favorite Pinot Grigio. It's, a, it's now why do you like a white burgundy? That's probably my favorite. I like it because it's the wines I think are more like savory than fruity. It's really good. Like white burgundy is something that I think you can drink um, on its own with a whole bunch of different food because it's it should be crisp, but it's still also like a little rich. I kind of wrote off white wine. This is my new favorite white wine. Everybody has those fancy openers. This is your old school wine key. You guys say this is the way to go. Why? Well, I just don't think you need to use anything that requires batteries to open a bottle of wine. The wine, the wine key is extremely effective, and they're 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 cheap. You can have them all over your house and in, you know wherever you need them, and that's really just like the best way to open a bottle of wine. So you're doing it. By the way, you're killing it right now. So now we'll move on to this. Is what is this? A red? That's a red. That's okay. one of our favorite wines. What's important about this wine, and this is what we were saying earlier, is that this is a red that. I would recommend to someone if they're saying, hey, I like Pinot Noir, but I want to try something different. Mm -hmm. So the grape is called Nebbiolo. Yeah. Uh, which is the grape of Barolo. Yeah. And this is the everyday drinking wine from an amazing producer that Chris has is, Chris is visited. Um, they're good friends of mine and they're, they're just amazing people and make great wine. See, this is why the Italians are so happy. They're doing this all day, right? That, that and pasta. This is the most beautiful light red drinking wine. Is there a region that you guys think is doing it better than anywhere else? Or is there one you prefer over another? The French are generally just the best at this, I think, broadly. But um, I don't know, like we, we've been talking a lot that there are some really cool wines coming out of Spain right now that yeah. are amazing and interesting and Definitely. There's a good little movement of wine, like uh, kind of a new generation in California too. Mm -hmm. In Santa Barbara County right now, there's some really talented winemakers and also up in the Sonoma Coast. We know that Champagne is only from the Champagne region. That we all know, right? This is a rosé because I happen to love rosé. It's sparkling. Ah! <laughs> that was good. Let me, okay. I love it. How do you guys feel about sparkling rosés or champagne for that matter? Anything bubbly. I love, I love champagne particularly because there's just there's a, there's a lot you can explore within champagne and have lots of different experiences. Do you guys have a favorite champagne by the way? My favorite is from a producer called Pierre Peters. Chris, what about you favorite champagne? I love the Pierre Peters one that Grant mentioned. There's another one um, called Boreche in Champagne that's very good as well. Well, you guys, I think it's only 1230 here, but it's a good start <laughs> to my day. I so appreciate this, and I feel like I know a lot more about wine than I did a few minutes ago. You guys are the best. Thank you. Perfect. We're happy to be here. Thank you so much. Cheers. 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 Bye. Bye. It was so much fun talking about wine with Chris and Grant. I learned a lot and I have some new favorite bottles thanks to them. Cheers, guys. Coming up, it's the perfect summer treat. I'm introducing you to the guy who brought Happy Ice here to LA. But first, I'm making chicken sliders with a homemade barbecue sauce. That's coming up next. To admit I usually use barbecue sauce right out of the jar but this time I decided to make my own so I'm making a chicken slider with a tangy sweet and spicy homemade barbecue sauce this time of year I think we all love a little barbecue but I I've never really ventured into making my own barbecue sauce but I wanted to do an a barbecue sauce with an Asian twist, meaning the flavors like ginger and garlic and soy sauce and chili paste and things like that to kind of get this sticky, sweet, spicy barbecue sauce. But I'm gonna do chicken and do it on little slider buns. 
And I just think it's a, a twist on a, maybe a classic barbecue chicken sandwich. Right here, ginger. I'm gonna go ahead and grate it. And in here, just to let you guys know, coconut oil I decided to use and just a half an onion, finely chopped. I sauteed that on the stove for just a couple of minutes to soften the onion. So this is how I'm gonna build the barbecue sauce. Now, a big clove of garlic. And you know what I'm gonna do? Before I add the liquid, I'm gonna put that back on the burner just for a minute. Get a little heat on that garlic and ginger. Don't wanna brown it to the ingredients that are gonna make our barbecue sauce. Molasses. Maybe do two of those. Soy sauce. This will make it salty. Apple cider vinegar. And then I have chili garlic sauce. I know this is a very American addition to barbecue sauce, but traditional barbecue sauce at time does have ketchup or has like a tomato aspect. So it needed just a little sweetness. Okay, so I tasted it. I think it needs a little more sweetness because molasses has a sweet quality, but it's also bitter, which I like, but it needs a little sweet honey. And then I think we're getting closer to the spicy, sweet, tangy thing we want. Let's go ahead and get that back here. And I'm gonna let that slowly simmer just so all the flavors come together. Probably about 20 minutes. Okay, now to our boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I'm gonna pat them dry because if they're not dry, they won't brown. And I want them to get nice and browned. So I'm gonna do a bit of a dry rub first. I'm gonna hit it with some kosher salt, with some pepper, garlic powder. Just like they do at barbecue places, how they do a dry rub first, because if you were to put the sauce on and cook it, the sauce would burn because there's so much sugar in it, uh, and the chicken wouldn't cook. So we'll do the sauce at the end. Smoked paprika, and I have some allspice. All right, I got my skillet, my cast iron heating up, and we're gonna cook it on the cast iron first and then pop it in the oven. Some coconut oil at the bottom of our cast iron. And I'm gonna get all these in here. Oh, and just let these brown. So our chicken browned on both sides, but it's not cooked through. Turn the heat off. This is when I'm gonna add our sauce. So, over each piece of chicken. Now, this is gonna go into an oven, 375. For our slider, I thought it'd be fun to make a slaw. We'll start with the cabbage. Cut it as fine as you can. Red cabbage going in. A couple of green onion. Just cut these on an angle, just because it looks pretty. Green onion goes in. Also, some cilantro I thought would be nice. Just a rough chop. I think I'm gonna do some cucumber. Why not? I'll just do really thin slices. Some cucumber going in. Rice wine vinegar, some salt. Now, you could leave it just like that. But because I have such a love for mayo, I think I'm gonna do a creamy slaw. Okay, to my bowl, mayo. To the mayo, squeeze a lime. Garlic powder, some granulated sugar. Just a little bit, this isn't too much, so a little bit of the creamy dressing. And that was probably two tablespoons of mayo, so not that much, just to give it that creamy kind of feeling you want when you have a coleslaw. So, in here I've got some melted butter, and a clove of garlic that I just smashed and let it simmer on the stovetop so it infuses the butter with the garlicky flavor. What we're gonna do with the butter is our little dinner rolls. Cut those and then just hit them with some butter so they toast up. And then these are just gonna go in the oven that's already on with the chicken just to brown. So our chicken out of the skillet, it's nice and caramelized and it looks tender, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my knife, yes, and I'm gonna just cut it up, and then I'm gonna pile it up on our bun. Our buns are nice and toasty. Let's build a slider. So I've got our buns, our garlic butter buns. We'll take the pile. 
pile of our spicy, tangy, sweet barbecue chicken. And then some of our creamy slaw. There it is. Mmm. This is about to get messy, so I'm gonna grab a plate. My buns are a little too crispy, but it's really yummy. A nice little twist on a barbecue sandwich. Those sliders were really good and not too bad for my first attempt at barbecue sauce. Coming up, the Happy Ice Truck is making a stop at my house. Levi and I get to meet the founder and we get to taste his fruity treat that is sure to bring a smile to your face. That's coming up next. Lemire Mitchell moved to LA a few years ago to start a new life. So how did he go from working as a tattoo artist to building a dessert empire? We take a look at his sweet store. Hey Lemire, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here to talk to you. Hence the happy ice truck. This is the coolest truck I think to see rolling down the street. And you know what it does? It does make you happy, it makes you smile. That was the goal from the beginning. I'm an artist, originally a tattoo artist. So I kind of knew what, what looks fun and you know, what looks kind of like not that fun, so. And then how does a tattoo artist then become a guy that's selling ice cream? Um, I think it's because I'm, I'm more than just a tattoo artist. Yeah. I think that I'm, I'm I, I rather would call myself a creative. When I saw how big the food truck culture was here and I also knew about the product that I wanted to sell that's big back home, I thought about the art and how I could, you know, mix the art and the food together and make it fun and colorful. And I was like, you know, it would work out. So the, the idea of Happy Ice grew from that. And so tell me about, you're from Philadelphia. This. Philadelphia ice, is that what it's called? Philadelphia water ice. What is Philadelphia water ice for those of us who are not from Philly? Just imagine if ice cream, sorbet, and shaved ice kind of came together and made a product. Yeah. It would make happy ice, except for it would be no dairy. Okay. Uh, and since we like uh, manufacture our product ourselves, there's no nuts in our product. So people who have food allergies, yeah. it's great for them. So it's dairy free. Dairy not free, free. Fat free. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nut free. Wow. Vegan friendly. What has the reaction been, first of all, to the truck? Because the truck was first. Was yes. the truck first and the now you've got first. a store? Yeah, so the truck was first. The reaction to the truck from day one was amazing. When I first got the truck here in Los Angeles, uh, somebody pulled us over on the side of the road and was like, man, your truck is amazing. I'm doing a guest uh, campaign photo shoot. I would love to just have your truck in the background. So like from that moment. That's so we, LA. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, whoa. What do you see when people, families come into the store, they look at all the flavors. It's like, it's it, it'll put a smile on your face. Yeah, it's, it's like working at Happy Ice is, is amazing for me. Um, Cause it was a lot of hard work. It still is a lot of hard work that goes into it. Sometimes, you know, it can be stressful. But when you go out into, you know, the line and, and you start seeing the people right. and they start to, you know, just be so happy about the product and they walk up to me and they be like, oh my God, we so happy that you bring this here. It makes all the hard work be like, it just melts off me. It's like. Yeah. So with the protests that were happening and it was really close to your shop, right? And, and we saw a video of you, I remember seeing you outside of your store trying to protect it. I mean, you didn't right. know what was gonna happen. Yeah, but. I didn't. I didn't know what was gonna happen, but you know, I came out here with nothing. So I worked so hard to literally get something. Like, I literally turned nothing into something. Yeah. So the thought of, you know, everything I worked for to possibly just be burnt down in a matter of, you know, seconds or somebody's just fast decision, you know, I, I couldn't live with that. And uh, I stood out there and when people walked up, they had so much respect for me just for standing outside the store that they left me alone. So if someone were to walk in the store, what do they see? What kind of flavors? How does it how does it work? They as soon as you walk in the store, you know, it's colorful, it's everywhere. Yeah. You get to select uh, three flavors of your own on a menu, and we turn any three flavors that you choose into like a rainbow scoop. Or you can do our rainbow rocket, which is all of our flavors. You oh, can't be mad a, yeah. when you're eating this. You exactly. know what I mean? You for, kind of forget about your uh -huh. worries for a minute. Exactly, and that's, right. the, that's the goal. I know celebrities have been into this. And that happened so naturally and organically. You know, like we didn't uh, reach out to anyone. Everyone just, you know, 
They wanted to word them out. It. Yeah, yeah. word them out. Angelina Jolie, come no, with her kids. That's big. <laughs> yeah, so that, that was a big moment for us. Post Malone came by. Really? Uh, Tiana Taylor. The celebrity that I for sure, like, I, I pray one day that they come in, and that would be LeBron. Do you think it's something you could see kind of spreading all over the country? I think for sure in the next three years, I think that you will definitely see Happy Ice in every major city. And um, my long-term goal, uh, maybe like 10 years from now, I want to possibly have like a Happy Ice amusement park. Oh my where gosh, it's like, yeah. you know, it's not just about the ice, we actually come families. Like, cause I'm big on family. Like, that's my thing. Levi, how cool! We have an ice cream truck in front of the house, a Happy Ice truck, which is even better. Should, should you pick which one? The that one? Oh, the patriotic the, one? The all-star? The all-star. You're an all-star, brother. That's Say thanks, Lemire. Yeah, you're welcome. Try it. Tell me what you think. The spoons change colors, too. No way. Good? Yeah. Look how much he gave me. <laughs> <laughs> what does it taste like? It tastes like, it tastes like ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Can I take a bite? I'm going to get one, too, but I no. Kids never let you share with them. We got a rainbow for mom. That's aw, thanks, Lemire. They match our shirt. Lemire is seriously the sweetest guy. He just wants to make people happy. And like we said, you can't be in a bad mood when you're eating happy ice. And now Levi wants an ice cream truck every day outside our house. Thanks so much for watching us, and we'll see you guys next time. Which one? He said he wants the rainbow one. <laughs>